Good morning, my name is Ricardo Chavarria. If that's a little hard, then you can call me Richie. I just turn around when you, when you say that. I work at a company called Nearsoft, and we do development work for uh, companies in the United States. We're located in Mexico, we have three cities. And uh, thanks to them, I'm here, so I'm very proud to be here today. I'm from the city of Chihuahua. You might know something about us. You might know this dog. We're also a city and we're also a state with big mountains and trains and stuff. So if you ever had the chance to go to a conference to Mexico or Chihuahua, please come. You're very, you are all welcome. And well, so I started uh, doing Raspberry Pi programming around two or three years ago. And I remember I bought one and then so I was like, you know, I can do all this kind of stuff and these projects and it's gonna be so fun. But I don't know, I got bored and I just left it there for a while. And you know, after a few months I asked some of my friends, what are you doing with your Raspberry Pi? And most of them were like doing these pirate TV shows and stuff for their TV. So I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. So, um, so at that time I, w I had a consultancy for local projects in Chihuahua, most of them were like web pages and um, marketing stuff and something like that. And so one of these companies was an architect, and they were like, "You know what? We need, we need a web page because so we want a, a project, and now we're appearing in all these magazines all over the country, and we don't have a, a website." So we're like, "Okay." And we also have no money for a server or anything. And basically, you know, we, this has to be as cheap as possible. And I'm like, well, I had an idea. So I set up a Raspberry Pi with Phoenix. And we built the website on Phoenix. And it was just basically it. And so we put it in a, it, it is a, like a data center in a company there in Chihuahua. I have a friend who is the, you know, the VP of engineering. And I was like, no one will notice if you put <laughs> this little box there. You know, no one will, they will know what it is. So I just said, just put this little box, and then that was it. So, and the next month, the magazine came up, and this, this architectural firm got started having visits and stuff, and they were like, man, the, the, the website is so fast. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, these huge servers. <laughs> in the cloud. <laughs> so I was very excited, and, and it was well before Nerves was a thing. It was a thing, but it was really hard to set up and stuff, so I didn't try it at that time. And so why didn't I use it? By now you know pretty well what Nerves is. So why didn't I use it? Well, first because it was in an early stage, so I couldn't use it yet, and then uh, later on, when I got the chance to use it, I, I realized it was not meant for servers. So I was like, I can use it now that I'm learning a lot of stuff of how you, OTP and Elixir works. But at first, I was like, I also want to learn how to do this in, on my own. And so now, this is, this is what, um, this, this being like two years since then, the website is still running. They just, I, forgot about it really, but they just called me last week and say, hey, can you renew our domain because we still needed that thing? And I'm like, oh yeah, the domain, I need to pay that. So yeah, so it's still running and I'm, I'm very happy with it. And so the, the next time I, got, I needed a problem like that, I had some problems that I needed to solve. And you know what, I'm like, I have a bunch of Raspberry Pis there and I don't wanna give my money to Amazon yet. I give them a lot of money anyway. So these are the other options I had. Like, okay, this option is build on Docker, and it has an image that you just put it on all of your Raspberry Pis, and you boot them up, and they start seeing each other, and they can balance each other and stuff. And so it looked fun. This is another option you might know. And there's actually a video. They have, uh, they have even like a list of things you, you should buy to make a cluster of Raspberry Pis and stuff. And they even have images of SD cards you just put and, and, and you know it works. This is very funny because when you start doing it, it would ask you if you have more than 128 nodes. 
So I just look at my Raspberry Pi and I'm like, no. <laughs> no. So those projects are great. These are great projects, but they don't, I could use any language. And I wanted to use Elixir, you know? I wanted to learn Elixir, so I could use any language with all these projects because they do all the balancing for you. So this is how it looks. You know, when I started doing this, that's my living room, by the way. <coughs> don't tell my clients. And so when I started doing this, I remember I, so I set it up, I put up my network, my local network, and, start, and started just doing uh, Raspbian and set up Elixir. And so I started doing some, some uh, you know, experiments and trying to at least run an app, run Phoenix, start, um, start trying to compile on my machine and then try to make deploys and stuff. So I let it, left it running during my work and it just, you know, it's, it's just blinking all day. And that day, I remember uh, Yahoo was hacked, and and some of the news said it was, you know, a dis distributed attack with the Internet of Things and stuff. And so my brother is a newscaster in my city. So we, uh, at, you know, when we were to at dinner, he told my mom before I got there, like, you know what, I think Ricardo is doing this stuff. <laughs> you know, so. So when I got to my house, my mom says, mijo, are you hacking Yahoo? <laughs> and I'm like, no, mom, <laughs> you know, no. So, so, okay, so I was like, okay, I got Elixir and OTP in three Raspberry Pi set up, so how can I, how can I make them work for me as the other projects let them? So, okay, this is my new problem that I have. In Mexico, we are very complicated for everything, apparently. And our invoicing system has, is, um, is a way, way complicated process where it's a neck, the, the real invoice you make that you need to present taxes and stuff if you want to have a, if you want to present as expenses, all your invoices have to be an XML signed by the person that uh, sold it to you and then signed by the government, they signed it, and then you get it. So the funny thing is, most people don't care about that XML. They just want a PDF, you know? They don't want, they don't want, to just, they don't want something normal and stuff. So right now, I'm working on a project that what we want is to download all the XMLs. The government, once you make all this process, the government has all the XMLs. So in case someone doesn't send you the XML, you don't have to worry, it's there. It's in the cloud. So uh, you, download, you download all the XMLs, and once you have them, you have all the information to build a PDF. And so make something that humans can read. And, and that's, that's what most people want. So the problem is a lot of companies, like huge manufacturing companies, they receive a lot of XMLs, like every day they receive uh, hundreds or even thousands a day because all the time they are uh, buying and selling all their, the, the needs for the factory to work. So I'll, I'm building uh, a system that will download all your XMLs and generate PDFs and then you'll have it handy and then you just have to log in and you'll have them there. This process will take, I mean, for, for, it, to be, for it to complete, it takes like 72 hours. So it's not a really critical system. And I mean, if it goes for an hour, no one will notice because it can take up to 20, uh, 72 hours to complete. So what I started doing is doing this in an Elixir, in Elixir uh, application and generate them there. So I was like, all right, let's do it in my machine. It's really simple. You know, I just, just open another another tab in my terminal, and I have two nodes, and that's it. So to run local, I just, uh, I just make a loop and start to send it to the other node, the work, and that's how I know it's, you know, it's working, and, and that's it. So it looks really simple, and this is what you will find on all the books, and actually I, I look at my programming Elixir book for this, and what you need to do is just send a signal, 
and send which, uh, which function you want to execute in the other node, and then it'll return you the, the result. It looks so simple, right? Well, as soon as you don't, you're not in your local machine, it gets a little bit crazy. So this is a code to run on nodes. So the first thing you'll notice is that when I called node span, I had to call the whole name of the node. But turns out Elixir doesn't like uh, IP addresses that much. So it's better if you, if you run it on a, or a name, you give it a name, and then you set it up on your uh, ETC, ser uh, ETC names. Uh, so, so that's the first thing that's different. And so what I did is just set up my three Raspberry Pis in my living room, and I started writing, and I started writing this, this process. So I do the same thing, it's, a, it's just a loop, but then I start sending it to one of each. So if you see that chunk, it's just to send three of them to each of them. And, and that's it. As you can see, um, as you can see there, it's the only thing I just, I just wanted to show here is that all of my Raspberry Pis are 100%. So that means the work is being distributed uh, along all the Raspberry Pis and it's not my laptop that's doing the work. So I was very happy at the point. So why did I learn? Well, I need to mess with my ETC host file to give them a name because as soon as you're outside your local laptop, everything you do with, with OTP nodes starts to, you know, they, they wanna have a name for that. So, so I, I uh, changed my ETC host and then that's my command for, for starting my nodes. All of them have to have an S name, in this case, you know, laptop or Raspberry Pi 1, 2 and 3. And then you have to give it a cookie which is like a passcode so that they recognize each other. And then I start. So I was running this on a Chromebook, and the Chromebook took 20 seconds to finish my uh, 10, uh, 10 loop, 10 times loop. And when I started using just one node, just, so just the Raspberry Pi and then one, one, and the laptop, it started to go down to 30 seconds, and when I used two, it went down to seven seconds, and when it's three, it's five seconds. So I'm like, this is working. I'm, I'm actually, you know, making distributed work. I'm a Rails uh, developer, so it, this is very, very interesting. <laughs> this is a whole new world. So, all right. And then I, I'm like, okay, but I need to do the same thing with Phoenix. And it turns out you can configure Phoenix to do this, but uh, you'll need this configuration. I mean, this is the one I found that uh, worked. Um, this is actually airline configuration. So to find this, I had a kind of like a hard time because I, I didn't exactly what, knew what to ask for. Like, so, well, what this is saying is that uh, I need these nodes and they are optional. So what that basically means is that your application is going to boot and then it will start looking for these nodes. And if they are not there, well, too bad, and it will start anyway. You can make them uh, to be uh, not optional, so that way, if they're not there, it will, turn, it will turn off as soon as they don't find it. And I give it a 10 second time, timeout, because that's me turning the, turn the men on. You know, I have 10 seconds before I turn on one. So it's enough. And it's great, after, after a couple of tries, same thing, I had to mess up with all the ETC hosts in the Raspberry Pis now because they have to see each other. And, and now when I, when I get to one of the consoles in one of the Raspberry Pis, I can see the other two nodes and I can uh, send them work now. They can see each other. So that was very, very, very happy about it. So, and as you can see, you can also, so now that I have it, all my three nodes, they have a web page. Uh, I need that because the actual system is built in Rails, and it's what the clients will see. But all the work is going to be done in the background with this Elixir application, and then they'll they'll just see uh, their downloaded files. So I needed Phoenix because I needed a small uh, web API just to uh, to send the server new XMLs to download once I know they they're there. 
And so I see my Raspberry Pi is working. So what did change? Well, the etc host files has to be changed in all of the hosts, we mean all of the machines, all of the Raspberry Pis. The command is a little bit different because now that I'm sending a, a Erlang applic application configuration, then I need to send that when I start the process. And if I need to balance the HTTP load, uh, I use HA proxies to, to balance the HTTP load and it, that too. I don't think I'm gonna use that in production because it's not gonna be seen directly by any client. It's gonna be all in the background, downloading XMLs and turning them to PDFs. And so it was very fun. <laughs> so in conclusion, if you wanna do embedded development, please use NERFs. Don't get into trouble like me. <laughs> and the other thing is that, well, everything that I used, actually, you can use it in Amazon or any kind of server. It doesn't have to be a Raspberry Pi, actually. And that was fun to know, like, because at first, I didn't know how powerful Elixir was and what parts of the OTP I'm using. You, you will hear it a lot that, that, you know, they say Elixir is built to be distributed all the OTP is awesome and it's way back and you know, but this time I was like, I wanna learn it. I would really wanna learn it and I really wanna know what, how it works and, and it was a very fun experience. And just to let you know, this system is going live in April, so after that I will have more fun of using Raspberry Pi as servers and don't tell my clients, I don't think they will ever see this uh, recording, so it will be our secret. <laughs> And I think that I will take questions. And muchas gracias. Yeah, so give, give a big hand to Ricardo. <laughs>